In this video, Dr. Jordan Peterson talks about why we have a dominance hierarchy and how people should maneuver their way to the top. Okay, so imagine a wolf pack. Now, a wolf pack is a pretty comp complicated social group. It's, it's a fair bit like uh, a, a primordial human group, which is why dogs have been with us for 25,000 years. Maybe they were wolves that first started to follow us around and scavenge, or more likely, I think, Someone went out, some primordial hunter went out hunting, killed a wolf female, found the pups, and brought one home for the children to play with. You know, and that was the origin, the origin of the dog. I think it was something like that, because dogs are basically, they're basically genetically identical with wolves. Now, the thing is, is we can get along with dogs. And the reason we can get along with dogs is because dogs have a social organization you could call it a dominance hierarchy, that's a fair bit like the human social organization. And so you can see that part of what it means to be human is the same thing that it means to be a pack animal like a dog, or a pack animal like our domesticated animals, like horses and cows, for example, which we can domesticate partly because they're social. So some of the structure of our social organization is the same sort of structure that an animal dominance hierarchy has, like a chimpanzee dominance hierarchy, for example. And so... We know that chimpanzees and other primates, monkeys for example, are acutely aware of the levels of hierarchy in their social structure. And there are, I think it's vervet monkeys, this is a very funny experiment. So imagine that the top vervet monkeys are like celebrity monkeys, you know, and the bottom vervet monkeys are like, you know, dissolute street people. And so then you take some pictures of dissolute street people who are just at the bottom of the hierarchy and you take some pictures of celebrities and you show pictures to a human audience and the human audience will look at the celebrities longer. Well, if you take the vervet monkeys and you take photographs of the top ranking vervet monkeys and the bottom vervet monkeys and you show them to vervet monkeys, then the vervet monkeys will look at the top ranking vervet monkey photographs more than the bottom ranking vervet monkey photographs. So in some sense, they're transfixed by the individuals who are higher up in the, in the social order. And that makes sense, right? Because what you should feel, especially in a fairly aggressive dominance hierarchy, what you should feel the closer you are to the bottom of the dominance hierarchy, the closer what you should feel for whatever is at the top of the dominance hierarchy, that should be, it should be closer and closer to awe. Now, when people feel awe, they get chills running up and down their back, their neck. Well, why, the reason that happens is because it's, a, it's, a, it's an atavism. It's a hangover from the time that when you were threatened by something awe-inspiring, let's say a snake or a bear or something like that, your hair, your fur would stand up, and the reason for that is so that you look bigger. And you still see this happening all the time with cats, right? Two cats will, normally cats face each other this way, right? But if they start to fight, they turn sideways, and that's so they each look bigger, and then they puff up their fur and their tail, and that's to show the other cat that they're really a lot bigger than the cat first thought. Now, of course, they're both doing that, so it's a little bit pointless, but they're just cats, so, you know, you can give them a break. But the point is, is that they pilo erect. And that's the same thing that happens, for example, when you're listening to very powerful music, and it deeply affects you and you get chills. It's like the hair stands up on the back of your neck. And that's a signaling of awe. Now, the reason you should feel awe towards something that's higher up in the dominance hierarchy is because that thing has power. Like, well, there's more than one reason. A, that thing has power. You better be careful of it, because it will put you in your place and fast. And part of the reason the dominance hierarchy exists is so that everybody knows their place and they don't have to be reminded of it by being half killed on a regular basis. You know, so maybe you're nine on a scale of one, one being the top. Maybe you're number nine. That's not so good. But number nine and, and not hurting is a lot better than number nine and lying there bleeding on the ground. And so what happens with dominance hierarchies is they usually arrange themselves in part by power, but by no means only in power, everybody knows where they are and pretty much everybody stays there. And that even happens over multiple generations, say, in, in, in complex primate dominance troops. Status is heritable. So, and you know, that there's not much of a leap between that and heritable monarchies among human beings. It's, it's a reflection of, you know, it's much more complex among human beings because it's articulated and structured. But it's the same basic thing. Okay, so you've got a dominance heart. <coughs> And it's fairly stable. And one of the things you want to do 
is climb to the top of the dominance hierarchy. And the reason you want to do that, there's all sorts of reasons. High quality mates, that's the primary reason. That's particularly true in humans if, if you're male. Because males are much more differential reproducers than females, which means a lot of males fail to reproduce completely, and some reproduce a lot. Whereas the typical woman reproduces at least some. So that means competition is more intense among men, and that's part of the reason why dominance hierarchies tend to be tilted towards male power, because competition means more to them. The outcome is more crucial. So, now part of what happens is that as people compete within the dominance hierarchy, what they're doing is to try to figure out who it is that is fit to be on top. Now, you might think that that's a matter of power. You know, in fact, your basic social lefty social constructionists would have you believe that that was all there is to it, is that the whole dominance hierarchy is nothing but a power system, and the people on top are there because they have power. And what's there is power, and by that they mean the ability to enforce their will on other people. Well, that's a, that's a dopey theory. And the reason for that is, is that it's unidimensional. You know, we know that people are multifaceted. There's no single motivation that's king. You know, for Freud it was sex and aggression. And like, if you're going to come up with a couple of potent candidates, those are two, but there's lots of other ones. People are playful, and play is a primary biological circuit. You know, we suffer, we're hungry, we're thirsty, we're affiliative. Like, there's a lot of biological necessity driving the makeup of our personalities, and there are biological subpersonalities, and to arbitrarily call one of them the source of something as complex as social organization is, it's, 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 it's a, it's a false form of monotheism. It's a crazy idea. And it's, it's the kind of idea on, that only people who really don't like to think would have. Because once you come up with that idea, it's all power. You don't have to think anymore. Someone can say to you, well, why is complex phenomena X the way it is? Why is the economy arranged the way it is? Well, it's so that the people at the top can maintain their power. Well, yeah, sure. But maybe that accounts for 10% of the reason. It doesn't get close to 100%. There's lots of reasons why hierarchies are structured the way they are. And sheer physical force is one of them. But it's, it's unstable. So, so Franz de Waal, who was watching chimps organize their dominance hierarchies in the Arnhem Zoo in Holland, noted quite quickly that it was fairly typical, or at least possible for the meanest, ugliest, strongest male chimp to be the dominant guy. Sometimes it was the chimp who learned to pick up a garbage can and whack the hell out of it with his stick because that intimidated his enemies, you know, so it's a, it's a bit of create, creativity there. But what, but what DeWall found was that the stable hierarchies were never run by barbarian chimp dictators. And the reason for that was that coalitions of other males would take them out. It's because, you know, you think, well, if you're if you're one antisocial, aggressive male, and, and you're tough, it's like, okay, you're tough, but three lesser, friendlier males who are bound together in a friendship pact, which chimpanzees form quite intensely, it's like, as soon as that guy turns his back, or has a bad day, or gets hurt, they're going to jump in there and tear him to pieces, and that's exactly what happened. So what DeWall found was that the stabler chimpanzee dominance hierarchies were run usually by males who were affiliative and gregarious, who remembered their social obligations, so that meant with, with regards to their friendship network, and who were also very good to the females and the infants in the troop, even if they weren't his. And the idea there is that power is an unstable basis for the maintenance of a dominance hierarchy across time. Because in some sense, even among chimps, you have to have the consent of the governed. Because you'll get a revolution otherwise. And so, you know, you're going to get a revolution if you put people in, or animals in a situation where they have nothing to lose. And so what that means is there are constraints on how you can act while you try to move up the dominance hierarchy system. Because if you're too aggressive and selfish and you're not grooming anyone else and you're not communicating with the other creatures in the troop, they're going to gang up on you and take you down. And so... If you're going to maneuver your way up the troop, you have to be do it in a manner that's civilized enough 
so that you don't get everyone against you. And so what it means is that to maneuver up a power hierarchy, especially a complex power hierarchy, you have to be a lot more than powerful. 